Look, I give up. I have never seen a game with a fanbase more desperate for any morsel of news and a company absolutely refusing to give them anything. That's the state of Cyberpunk 2077, which does indeed have a hyper-engaged fanbase who have weathered all the storms so far, and are desperate for any real news about the future of the game outside of bug fixes and performance improvements, which is all we've seen for eight months now. Cyberpunk 2077's roadmaps have been some of the most hilariously vague I've ever seen in the industry. And even then, it still somehow feels like they're missing their own nebulous promises. Granted, we still have the fall to come, but I'm tired of waiting, so I'm just going to do this myself. There are likely four major moments for Cyberpunk 2077 to come, before CDPR fully moves on from the game, which they have said they want to keep selling for years. And I'm going to combine two of them. Here's the roadmap I would create if I was in charge, and it was physically possible to pull off. September 17, 2021 free DLC and next-gen launch at this point, players have been waiting so long for free DLC that the correct move is probably just to roll it up into the next-gen launch when the game has official PS5 and Xbox Series 10 versions. I would actually be somewhat annoyed if I played a bunch of free DLC on my Series 10, running the 1X version, and then the Series 10 version came out shortly after. I would also not do what The Witcher 3 did with a rolling release for the DLC. It was doing that right after launch, not nine months later. Drop all the free DLC at once, so players can sift through all the new cosmetics, weapons, gear and missions at the same time they check out the improvements on next gen. This can be used as a soft relaunch of the game, a sort of, look, it's good now. Plus there's some new stuff, even if that stuff is relatively minor. January 14, 2022 Expansion 1 As I've said already, we are way, way behind The Witcher 3's DLC schedule. Hearts of Stone was already out for a while by now in the lifespan of that game, so I don't think I'm asking too much for Cyberpunk 2077's first DLC to come out over a year after launch. This would be a paid expansion, though lord knows they probably owe it to many players for free, and it would add significant storylines to the game like Hearts of Stone did. Not going to go into story specifics, rogue AIs. Morgan Blackhand, but this is where I'd like to see the timing of this. May 20th, 2022 Expansion 2 This may be pushing the timeline, but around a year and a half after launch, I'd like to see the second DLC out, hopefully an even larger one than the first, similar to the scale of Blood and Wine vs Hearts of Stone. To me, these expansions need to be this big so CDPR can reclaim some of its wow, this is a company that makes DLC bigger than most games, type of prestige that they've lost with the Cyberpunk launch.